Well, I watched another episode of Space 1999. Oh, goody. So, what happened in this one? Well, of course, you know, they're in space. Right. Yeah. And uh, there's some interesting things here that I, I think they've made mention of it before. I'm sure they did. Uh, but the idea, uh, the, the, the title is Space Warp. And so I would think for the distant uh, interstellar travel that uh, the show's been involved with, uh -huh. that this would be a regular occurrence for how deep they're going. It's not just, hey, that nuclear blast really set us off, you know? Well, it did initially. Yeah, but that's still not... An, they would still be in the solar system, you know? <laughs> well, oh, because the sun's gravity would be that strong. Yeah, a lot stronger than just a nuclear blast from their nuclear waste dump or whatever the hell that was in the first episode. Yeah, something like that. You know how dangerous it would be to just haul all that stuff to the moon? I mean, what if the the rocket exploded in Lodge of Earth? Well, that's, uh, that's like a dirty bomb, you know? The whole area would be irradiated. Yeah. I don't think they thought this through. No, not really. But anyway, the space warp thing uh, is uh, more of the... the, the the episode here, the first disaster they got to deal with. The other one is uh, Maya has the flu. Oh, no, that's terrible. Oh, boy, it's so bad. That's why everybody should get their flu shot. Yeah. Well, apparently she didn't. Oh, God. Why that? Why that? Well, I think they missed an opportunity here. I think uh, the suggestion, I believe, I may have nodded off a bit, but nevertheless, uh, that uh, the space warp distortions had something to do with her illness or something. I why can't they just say she caught the flu? Yeah, I know, and that would make more sense because she's an alien, and she's, I mean, she kind of looks human, but she's a shape-shifting, and she turns into, you know, birds and dogs and everything. doesn't matter what the size. I know. She turned into a cockroach once. Exactly. So, uh, but apparently she can't uh, shape-shift the necessary antibodies to fight off the, the flu. So she's got a bad fever, and she warns the doctor that she needs to put her in restraints. Oh, my God. She's she's into that? Well, she, yeah, that we don't know her culture and stuff. Who knows? You know, and since she can shapeshift. So she's probably by then. She's probably got the hots for Helena, too. Well, if, if, if this was done today, that would definitely... Oh, yeah, that, you would have to. Right. So, uh, but no, uh, it's not for bondage. She uh, said, hey, I might go crazy from the fever and turn into a monster. And so uh, the doctor says, hey, yeah, oh, yeah, good point. So uh, puts her in restraints. But, of course, it's just these Velcro strap things. So I don't think the, she fully took this as seriously as she should because of she, of course, the fever drives her crazy and she turns into a monster and goes on a rampage. Now that's really stupid. Don't They already know she could do that because she's already turned into monsters and stuff. I know. So, boy, yeah, uh, Helena really dropped the ball on this. Um, I, I mean, I guess that's the only restraints they had. Just Velcro? I mean, just an ordinary human being could get out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So... So that was the the struggle they had to deal with, at least at, at, at that point. The, the other one. Oh, there's another one? Yeah. Well, at the outset, before they reach the space warp, which they're unaware of, uh, there's this lost, uh, well, derelict spaceship. And they say, hey, let's investigate that. There might be something in there. Yeah, you could uh, uh, scavenge all kinds of other property and whatnot. I mean, look, they left it there. It's like some people, you know, if they look down upon, and uh, for good reason, because there could be fleas and stuff. But if you, like, see a decent uh, lazy boy chair or sofa on the side of the road, well, you know, it, it's yours. Finders keepers. Yeah, it's something like that. I don't know about the fleas, but they get into the ship eventually. But before they get there... Uh, the the alpha the moon <laughs> along with the alpha base uh encounters the space warp and disappear oh my god leaving the the, the eagle shuttle there all by themselves that's right uh koenig and uh tony are uh going to investigate that ship but now holy crap there's no base for them to return to 
Oh, man. It, 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 they're just going to die in that shuttle out there. Pretty much. So uh, they go to the derelict ship to try to, well, hopefully they can find something. <laughs> Maybe some extra oxygen or even some food. Yeah, but you don't know who the aliens are and what they eat. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? You know, I mean, you're going to you're definitely going to have the squirts, probably projectile squirts eating alien food. Yeah. And probably catch their flu. Oh, wait, that's right. You wouldn't have the uh, the immunity to it. No. So anyway, uh, that's what they're dealing with. And then there's a tape on there. Turns out the ship uh, is abandoned. Uh, and there's a message there from the captain who explains what happened. Same thing to them. Their mothership went through the uh, space warp. And they spent their time trying to calculate where the warp exactly was so that they could follow it through. But ran out of time. Uh, the crew had died. Uh, and or, or no, they, their attempt uh, damaged the ship or something, something like that. I'm forgetting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what happened to the captain? Oh, well, he died too, but he left that message to explain things. Well, that was nice of him to leave a little note. Yeah, and uh, as luck would have it, they had figured out the coordinates exactly, but too late for them. So, of course, Koenig and Tony said, well, we got the coordinates, so uh, they used the derelict ship to boost the Eagle, and they made it to the space warp. It's a good thing they were able to read, you know, the alien stuff. Yeah, they, they probably needed something there, or deal with... Yeah, I don't know how they would get to that, you know, where there was some AI or something they could figure it out and understand language. Of course, they got Maya, who might know a few things, but, I mean, they're really out there going all over the place, so odds are they would not be able to uh, figure out what the alien chicken scratch was, you know? Yeah, that would be tough. So anyway, but, you know, it was somewhere around there. Yeah, an invisible hole. Yeah, and so they get through it. Meanwhile, Maya is turning into different monsters and tearing up the place, tries to steal the shuttle. And why is she doing that? Oh, well, she's having weird memories about saving her father. Oh, that was Brian Blessed. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, he died on that planet because he was nuts and everything. And uh, so in her feverish uh, madness, uh, she's turned into a monster in the hopes that she could steal an eagle and fly back to her planet. Well, she can't now. I mean, good God, how many light years away they are now from that space warp? Yeah, exactly. But, you know, she's feverish and crazy. So, uh, but they finally uh, capture her and uh, they, you know, try to get her to change back and, and treat her and whatnot. Um, and she gets uh, wounded in the, the, the fight, but unfortunately she's in this alien body and they don't really know how to treat it. Um so she just, if she changes back to her more like human form, they could treat her. Yeah. But in the midst, uh, Russell's going to go ahead and, uh, Helena, you know, she's going to go ahead and try to operate because, well, you know, she's in bad shape. Uh, and then she turns into her father. Brian Blessed came back. No, it was just some guy who kind of looked like him, but good enough. Maybe it was like her uncle or something. That yeah, could be. I wonder why she would be thinking of that. They're better off not knowing. Anyway, uh, he gets in a fight with them and stuff, and they knock him out. Um, the thing about it, though, if she it was a, it was another humanoid form, so they still could have performed the surgery then, you know. Oh yeah, because they would know how to work on that, right? But anyway, she beats them all. The fight scenes are terrible. They're really awful. Not that good choreography there, huh? No. And, uh, boy, Barbara Bang just cannot act uh, in scenes like that. She never really did that much. At, at, uh, yeah. I mean, there's, she's a rather uh, you know, a flat face when it comes to emotion and stuff. And here, you know, when, oh, no, there's danger. No, Maya. Uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, good Lord. And uh, so turns into another monster, goes on the run, uh, goes in. Uh, anyway, they eventually capture her and she turns back and you know they're good and by the time Tony and Koenig uh, get back uh, Tony's like well they've been resting while we were working hard to get back and they make it a silly joke oh that's nice well you know no harm done actually no there was quite a bit what do you mean 
Well, uh, in her madness, she ended up destroying the, uh, a, quite a bit of the hangar where they keep the eagles, and it destroyed one of them. And with the fire breaking out, I, I would imagine probably destroyed a couple of more. Oh, my God. And what with the fire? And, and, you know, they're stuck on that moon. How much oxygen supply do they have? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question there, uh, Lefty. Because, uh, I mean, they never show. Well, I think they did a couple of times. But they, they would need, like, a massive a greenhouse of uh, vegetation there. Uh, and provided they come in contact with some stars to, uh, you know, provide the sunlight, uh, that could make the, their oxygen. Uh, but yeah, uh, with a fire breaking out, burning it all up. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, the whole concept that the moon would be traveling through space. Yeah. Well, space warps would, you know, that's what they should have just done. They should have been in some kind of, you know, like Alpha was a space station. They got sucked into a space warp and came. Yeah, that would be a better idea instead of the whole moon doing it. But um, that's what they, instead of just the blast, it would have been like this experiment with wormholes or something. Right. And then off they go. Yeah. Anyway, uh, con conceptually, there's some ideas here that's not bad. The idea of Maya losing control, fine. The space warp, of course. Uh, interesting and all that, but man, the the fight scenes and action scenes were just badly done. Uh, and then you you have that seventies music. <laughs> what? Like, what? What? What do you think? It? Well, it's you know that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's just like porno music. Well, well, yes. So there you go. Another fun-filled episode of Space 1999.